I'm going to make an attempt to explain the use of the rubber dam, why we use it, and how we use it. Uh, we use it to maintain moisture control, very important when we are condensing composites. Uh, we also must use it when we are trying to uh, pass our licensure exam. This is required that we apply it whether or not we're doing a composite restoration or an amalgam restoration. So if you can't do it, you're going to fail the test. And we're thinking positively, no one's going to fail. Okay, first I'd like to go over the components of the rubber dam system. And first we have our rubber dam forceps. And these forceps are a means of transporting the retainers, these are the retainers, onto the tooth. Our next instrument is our rubber dam punch. The rubber dam punch actually punches holes in the rubber dam. That makes sense. Big holes for big teeth and tiny holes for little lower central incisors. This is our rubber dam and it's pretty floppy. And in order for this uh, rubber dam to not flop around the patient's mouth, we attach it to a frame and the frame, as you can see, has prongs on it. So we actually attach these prongs, there we go, to the rubber dam, and that will stabilize our rubber dam on the patient's mouth. These are the retainers or the clamps. And on the first row up here, I've got retainers with um, out apically positioned prongs. Each prong, there's one prong, two, three, four. Each prong must be stable on a tooth. Okay. And if the tooth has a uh, very flat contour, or if the tooth, um, if the gingiva is really really covering your prep and we really need to pull the gingiva down so we can have good access, we can use an apically positioned prong. Okay, these clamps all have apically positioned prongs. This is the bow of the clamp and the bow is always angled toward the posterior of the tooth. See the little holes here? Okay, the clamp actually fits in the hole and we squeeze the handle and the retainer opens up and then we can actually put the retainer over a tooth. Let me show you that, that mechanism. Okay, here's our rubber dam. All right, we squeeze the handles together. We put the prongs on the lingual first and then we roll over to the buckle. All right, and we always want to make sure that the clamp is going to fit. We hate to assemble all of this in the patient's mouth with the rubber dam attached and then the clamp flies off. So we actually wiggle it with our fingers to make sure it's not going to come off. Okay, all righty. Now, what's this strange looking clamp here? This is for anterior teeth. And you're going to use this frequently in um, endo when you do a root canal. Also, it's great if you're doing it, if you're doing a class five and you need to pull the gingival tissues down. Now, pull the word, you know, the phrase pull the gingival tissues down, it sounds like it might hurt. Yes, this can be painful. And the remedy for that is to make sure your patient has had anesthetic. So he will... Uh, be calm when you're attaching this, okay? Because it feels very, very tight, very tight. You can imagine if you don't have good anesthesia, these prongs could really hurt. Now I have attached a piece of dental floss. Uh-oh, there it goes. There we go. I've attached a piece of dental floss to this retainer, and that's a fail-safe mechanism if the patient should swallow or aspirate this clamp, we have some means of retrieving it, All right? And that rarely happens. All right, what's this thing? This is a template. It's got little holes punched in it, and we have to 
uh, ascertain where we're going to put the holes in the, pay, on the, in the rubber dam. So this is what we do. We put the rubber dam over the template, take a ballpoint pen, and we actually mark where we want the holes. Okay. All right, so let's get busy. And we're going to punch some holes in our rubber dam. And this is going to, this is a big molar, so let's use a big hole. Okay. So that's 31. And here's a hole for 30. And then we're going to make a smaller hole for our two by cuspids. And then we have our cuspid. And then even smaller for our laterals and centrals. And I'm going to take this rubber dam all the way over to the opposite lateral. Okay, great. All right, um, would you like to go over to our um, mannequin now? I didn't mention this, but each one of these clamps has a number in it. And in your rubber dam cassette, the number will of the clamp is printed in the box and it tells you which tooth this is good for. So this is clamp number seven and it's great for lower molars. Okay, so let's get started. And um, again, you want to make sure that this is gonna fit our patient. So we're gonna put the prongs on the lingual and then roll toward the buckle. All right, now let's test it. Let's make sure it fits. All right, and remember, the bow always goes toward the posterior of the arch. All righty. Now, we're happy. Now, and there are two ways you can do this, mind you. You could actually stretch the rubber dam, stretch one of those holes all the way over the dam. You can do it that way. but. These rubber dams that we have in lab, some of them are pretty thin, though this one seems pretty thick. The problem with that is sometimes you can tear the dam. But I like it because you can see so well. I like that method. That's what Dr. Mercer and whoever else wants to join with her. But here's another way of doing it. You can actually stretch the hole over the wings, like so. Okay, like so. Now, I don't usually do this, but the next step, if you'd like, you can attach your rubber dam to the frame. I'm more comfortable doing it this way which is the way I was taught. And old habits are hard to break. All right, we're going to take our forceps and we're gonna put the little prongs in the forceps, we're gonna put them into the retainer. Okay, squeeze the handles and let's go over the tooth, lingually, and then roll to the buckle, like so, all right. Now, let's put the frame on. And if you're working by yourself, this can be really awkward. But I like to uh, spear one end of the dam, and then I go diagonally and spear the other end. All right, then there. I'm just gonna do four right now. All right, and this convex side, this convex end, it mimics the contour of the face. Okay, some uh, practitioners put the frame under the rubber dam, but you know, if I was a patient, I don't think I would appreciate that. So on top is just fine. Uh, sometimes we're in the clinic and uh, we'll see students who have the frame backwards, meaning the convex side is flipped over. And that's, that's obviously wrong. But you know, you get nervous when you first start working out and you forget what you're doing sometimes. 
All right, now we're going to stretch. That, let's start. I'm going to go over to the... Now you see why I like to put the rubber dam over the tooth. All right. I know that I have taken a hole all the way over to the opposite lateral. All right, now we need dental floss, and I'm going to have to use I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. Now I have my floss. Okay. All right. I need a dental assistant. We didn't think about that, did we, Jose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And This patient has really tight contact. <laughs> and that's the contraindication for the use of the rubber dam sometimes. But you can see we're using the floss to get the rubber dam through the interproximals of the teeth. And this is when you are so happy to have a dental assistant to help you on your board exams. Imagine doing this with saliva and a tongue in the way. Okay, what's happening here? I think maybe we need to come up. Yeah. Let's try this. And you just have to be patient with it. Remember, big holes for big teeth, little holes for little teeth. Okay, now I have isolated just about the entire quadrant. Um, putting the clamp on tooth number 32 on this deniform is not a good idea. The, it tends to snap the jaws closed for whatever reason. Okay, so now let's get the other prongs. Onto the rubber dam. Okay, that one tore a little bit right there. But that's all right. And we're ready. Now, sometimes this uh, rubber dam, uh, after you put it on, it's actually on top of the patient's nose. And that's not a happy thing for the patient. So you would just take a pair of scissors and cut so the patient can breathe easily. Okay, that's it. All right, now what's the next thing? Well, we want to look at what we've done. I mean, do we have saliva? Is the rubber dam on the way it needs to be? Well, we haven't done one thing, and what's that? You see these holes? Remember, those are the holes that we speared with our forcep. So spit is going to actually, oh, excuse me, saliva is actually going to bubble up through those holes. So what do we do? We stretch the rubber dam underneath the hole. And let's see, Dr. Mercer, are you going to break the rubber dam? Are you going to tear it? No, you're not. Very good. Okay. So now our teeth are, uh, our teeth are virtually waterproof, so to speak. And your next question is, well, uh, can the patient swallow like this? Yeah. No, they can swallow. 
Or, you know, if they can't, maybe you have to go under. Let's pretend that this is the, well, we'll use this. Let's pretend that this is one of the plastic uh, saliva ejectors. We could just take it. This is the high volume evacuator. And uh, you just put it under there. And you can bend the plastic ones and leave it there if necessary. Okay? And, you know, class, you can actually cut a prep with the rubber dam on. And that's really great because guess what? Your patient can't talk. Your patient can't uh, manhandle the uh, saliva ejector, so to speak. You know, uh, or should I say commandeer uh, the saliva ejector. They can't talk and they have to stay open. So this would actually work cutting the preparation. And your next question may be, yeah, but I've used water. There's water coming out of my handpiece. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You can take the saliva ejector and hold it right in there, okay? Uh, and sometimes you can actually, I don't know if this will work on this little thin rubber dam. No, I don't think it will. We can make like a little cup here, you know, and water will collect there so it's not dripping all over the place, okay? So now we're ready to, um, well, we haven't cut our prep yet. We're a little premature, but that's okay. You're not required to put the rubber dam on when you're doing a prep, but guess what? Suppose you are doing a prep and it's getting really deep and you're thinking, am I gonna have a pulp exposure? Okay, class, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to stop cutting and put the rubber dam on before you actually have a pulp exposure. That way we don't introduce bacteria in here, okay? you all uh, the uh, technique that I mentioned before, the technique that I particularly enjoy using. I actually put the rubber, I mean the um, retainer on first. Okay, shake it, make sure it's not going to move around. And then I can, and I've already attached the frame. I don't usually do that, but you know, just to show you there are different ways to do this. Then I actually, and I've only made one hole here. I'll explain that in a little, in a little while. Now I'm going to stretch this rubber dam over. There we go. And I'm ready to work. You know, and the, the benefit or the, the thing that makes it simple is that you can, you see, I mean, the clamp is there. You know, you can see easily. You don't have anything in the way. And, you know, if you were just doing one tooth in that dental visit, you wouldn't, and it was a class one, you really wouldn't need to isolate the entire quadrant. You, you just don't need to. And this is quick and simple. And uh, that's it. And the... The rubber dam is underneath the holes already, so there's not going to be any saliva popping up. Okay, and I, you know, if you wanted to isolate more teeth, that's fine. The benefit of that is uh, it helps with vision. Um, you've got a nice finger rest available, etc., etc. Okay, there's one other thing I want to show you. So let's take this off. Remember, if you're just doing one two, and that one preparation is not a class two. Now, if it's a class two, you want this retainer, you want the retainer to be ideally two teeth distal to your class two, the tooth that you're working on. Say if you're doing a class two on 29, ideally the clamp would go on tooth number 31. Because when you're doing a class two, you're going to have a matrix band on the tooth. And you don't want the clamp to interfere. Okay, there's one other clamp I want to demonstrate, and this is one that you will use quite a bit in uh, endo, and for some class fives you may use it. Okay, let's apply this. I'll say, you know, why don't you answer the phone? I think they can hear it ringing. No, oh, that's all right. We're going to let it go. All righty. Okay. So. For this uh, tooth, that little anterior clamp that we talked about, you have to put the rubber dam on first. Okay, now you're saying, I need a dental assistant. I agree. 
I find it very taxing to do work without a dental assistant. Now, since I don't have a dental assistant, I'm going to let this go on the, hopefully it won't pop up. I need two hands to do this. So again, the little um, rings down, we go forceps through the holes, and now we're going to go back to our tooth. There we go. Ooh, that hurts. Ouch! You can see how that really pushes down on the tissue. So that class 5 that had a gingival margin that was subgingival, we've taken care of that. We have pushed the tissues down, and let's say we're in endo. Okay, and we have no reason to isolate any more than that one tooth, and we're ready to uh, do our access opening. And honestly, it, it's really good, because this really happened to me in the clinic one day. Uh, I was going to supervise a student doing a pulpectomy, and the young lady uh, did not mark the tooth first before she put the rubber dam on. So she isolated the wrong tooth. And she actually did an endo access opening on a tooth that didn't need a root canal. So I've spoken to some of the uh, teachers in the endo department, and they recommend, you know, just starting the access opening with your uh, handpiece before you put the rubber dam on. Mark the tooth so you don't make that mistake. Okay, so again, uh, these clamps... They fit very, very tight. Some of you may have had the experience, and they're uncomfortable. So you make sure the patient is anesthetized. Before I go, I wanted to show you one more uh, way of attaching a rubber dam uh, that you will find works nicely in the upper arch. And um, we're going to do this, and the rubber dam is going to stay up without a clamp. All right, we've already made the holes, and let's see, I think it goes this way, because we don't have a lateral on the left-hand side. So. And if this was a patient, it would probably work best if there was a bicuspid behind this cuspid, but Jose Steniform is... Well, I don't think this is supposed to have one. This is supposed to be a space. Yes, I'm sorry. Forgive me. All right, and I didn't punch a hole there because the tooth wasn't there. So, there we go. All right, now I'm going to put the frame on. Don't say, did I throw the frame away? I'm hiding it. Okay. Now let's put this on. Okay. And double floss. Okay. And let's get over this class four there. And I just realized something else I didn't tell you guys, which is of importance. Now remember, when you're working in a patient, you've got, everything's wet, you know? And you want your rubber dam to actually evert around the neck of the tooth. And how do we do that? Well, and let's pretend that we have an air tip on this uh, air syringe. If you stretch the rubber dam like so and dry off the teeth simultaneously and then let go, this rubber dam will actually curl, curl around the necks of the teeth. Okay? So, our dental form, you know, it, it's easy to do this, but in a patient, Sometimes you need a little help in keeping this uh, rubber dam up without a clamp. And look what you can do. You can cut. 
see I cut a little piece of the rubber dam there. You can cut this rubber dam and then there you go. Take that bit approximately and your rubber dam will stay up quite nice. Another alternative is to use a piece of dental floss. Let's remove this now, see if we can. You can use a piece of dental floss and uh, tie a knot here. Okay. And that will keep the dental. Oops. Well, you get the general idea. Okay, and we don't have a lateral here. So that's a little awkward. But pull that and pull this. Okay. And everybody knows how to make a square knot right over left and duck, then left over right and duck. Okay? So uh, that's something that you can do. Now let's suppose you were in the clinic and you had done this and you know midway through the procedure for whatever reason the rubber dam starts slipping off. Look what you can do. All right. After the fact, we're going to attach a clamp. Let's say it starts slipping off of this cusp and we certainly don't want to disassemble everything. But we don't need to. Look what we can do. We don't even need, look, there you go, problem solved. Right now we have a bigger problem, we dropped our equipment. Okay, um, any questions? We're good. Of course, uh, you have to have autoclaved clamps, all right? All of this is going to be autoclaved, okay? And um, that's it. You guys are ready for your licensure exam. You're ready to do your class three. Uh, this might work for a class five, but if the class five is at the gingival margin is in the sulcus, maybe this isn't the greatest method for you to use. And you know, if you find that that's the problem, what have you got? You've got this little handy device, and it will push again. It will push the gingiva away. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you.